Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sid underscore Dwyer. So in today's video, I want to talk about some YouTube history surrounding Shane Dawson's first podcast. Since he's strangely decided to start a new podcast, I thought it would be an appropriate time to go over what happened with his last podcast. I am going to talk about the guests that he had on, the controversies, the co-hosts, and some weird recurring segments that he had. So in 2013, Shane started a podcast called Shane and Friends. And at the time, the Shane and Friends title was familiar to his fans because he was making talk show comedy sketches where he dressed up in an array of offensive characters for those videos. But the trends on YouTube started to shift and he moved away from making those kind of high production kind of videos. So he reused the name and the introduction jingle for his podcast. And on this podcast, he talked about him and his podcast co-hosts lives and what was going on with some celebrities and just general pop culture talk. And when he first started this podcast, he started it with his producer at the time, Lauren Snipper. Lauren worked for Shane between 2011 and 2014 as the head of production. At first, she helped recruit actors for his sketches and pretty much just organized his life. She also appeared in a couple of his sketches and many of his daily vlogs, and of course, eventually became his podcast co-host. And being a regularly occurring person in Shane's life, she became pretty well liked amongst his fandom. A very common thing that fans of Shane's would comment on Lauren's Instagram posts would be Slay Queen. This Slay Queen situation, mm -hmm. I mean, it is getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. Like, I post anything on Instagram, and, like, it's just like, Slay Queen, Slay! And if you weren't one of these fans who would comment on her Instagram posts or listen to the podcast, then you may recognize her from something else. Several clips of Shane berating her on a reality show called The Chair went viral a couple of years ago. Do you not understand what I'm saying? I she do. says Facebook No, I do. It's okay. It's okay. Then I why just... are you saying it's not okay? Because she's it saying twice. it so many times that so it's we can like... we only say it once? So... so then we either can say it or we can't. No, that's not... Understand. Do you understand what she's saying? It, it's... No, I don't either. Just, okay. just the, just the let's second get to, one, let's the line. Get to acting yeah. notes and not like... Word note. As his producer, Lauren was involved with helping create Shane's movie, Not Cool, which was the movie that accompanied the reality show, The Chair. And from what we saw, Shane did not treat Lauren very well during that experience. So yeah, if you didn't know her from the podcast, you may have known her from that. It was a dynamic that was regularly repeated on the podcast. Lauren was very often the butt of Shane's jokes. <laughs> First of all, you were not slaying in that dress. What dress was it? Oh, because I put a picture of myself no. in my uh, wedding dress. Maybe they were talking to you about your husband. You know what? Like, oh, like, oh, okay. The time I, I got, I, I went to a fancy hotel and I thought I was a hooker. So I don't blame them though, because there's a lot of transvestite hookers. Because I mean, I have fairly good radar. Eh, I don't think you and do. Gay I feel like you've been in with a lot of gay guys in your life. You know what? I feel like, you, I feel like you've turned a lot of them gay. <laughs> so then about a month after they started the podcast, Shane launched SD Army. SD Army was an online forum created by Shane to discuss things all about Shane. This was a place where people could discuss his videos, talk about his movie Not Cool, write in questions for him and of course talk about his podcast and Shane would actually often check this forum to find things to talk about on his podcast and one week he found a post talking about Lauren and keeping on brand with how Shane treated Lauren at the time the post was not a very nice post finally um our favorite part of the show besides calling my mom is reading your guys's comments mm. because they're always <sighs> Poignant. So mean. Um, so this one is uh, from sdarmy.com. Uh, if you go to the podcast section, you can leave your comments and we'll be reading them. I read them on the toilet. There's a whole section on the sdarmy.com that is just like Lauren's noises. <laughs> and it talks about all the noises that you've been making during the podcast and how loud it is. Oh, if she was in a vlog, I would literally turn it off, go over the toilet, and dry heave. Does anyone actually know why Lauren is co-hosting? Was it Shane's idea? Was it her idea? Was it something? third party person's idea was it spur of the moment because i kind of feel like maybe lauren just grabbed the mic and started talking and this caused a massive surge of posts from fans about lauren hoping that Shane would read their post on the podcast. While there was, of course, a number of Lauren appreciation posts, posts trashing Lauren were a lot more frequent, to the point where there was eventually a rule to not make any more Lauren posts. There was a post pinned to the top of the podcast subforum, basically saying, no more Lauren posts, please. But by that point, the damage was already done. Shane had enough ammunition to make it into a recurring segment on the podcast, and the Lauren trashing through these forum posts continued. 
And that was not the only way that Shane found a way to make Lauren the butt of the joke. And because Shane would react to the Lauren insults and give attention to the fans who would make up these Lauren insults, Fans found other ways to insult Lauren in the hopes of getting some kind of response from Shane. Squarespace was a regular sponsor of the podcast and Shane would encourage his fans to create websites and then tweet the websites at him and any websites he liked, he would bring them up on the podcast. And because Shane created this environment between him and his fans where it was okay for Lauren to be the easy target on his podcast, a website was created titled Lauren's Sloppy Vac. And of course, Shane shouted it out on his podcast. And then this became a regularly repeated joke amongst Shane and his fans on the podcast. But my, really my favorite is from Tsunami. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is Lauren's sloppy dot squarespace.com. For the record, I got a bikini wax today and my <laughs> is anything but sloppy. Yes, very, very sloppy. <laughs> and while Lauren didn't seem overly offended by this joke, it just goes to show how Shane created this toxic relationship between himself and his fans, where they would feel comfortable to say these things about Lauren. And this goes beyond just the usual amount of internet hate. People are going out of their way to say things about Lauren, knowing that Shane will react to it on the podcast and give them some kind of recognition for it. But it doesn't end there. Probably one of the worst things that came from this kind of connection that Shane had with his audience is that it ended Ended in a lot of anti-semitism. On the podcast, Shane would often insult Lauren with all of the stereotypical anti-semitic jokes. And because those jokes were such a common occurrence on the podcast, it got to the point where fans were sending in anti-semitic fan mail, knowing that Shane would like it. And he did like it. He gave a big platform to it. He showed it off in one of his vlogs and had Lauren react to it. Come on in. Okay, I'm coming. Oh my god. This is this is <laughs> this is like my favorite horrifying who drew this loud jew what about that one <laughs> that one's nice and as you can see, this she did not like. I really wonder where the fans who sent that mail in are now. But anyways, in a podcast, Shane attempted to defend himself as to why he is so mean to Lauren. And he claims that he is so mean to Lauren because she is mean to him. A claim that she denies. Well, here's the thing, guys. I feel she's mean to me. I'm mean to her. I am not mean to you. You are so mean to me. Oh my God, you're so mean to me. Oh, uh, please. Um, anyways, no. I mean, listen. Yes, we're mean to each other. No. Yes, mean to we me. <laughs> we're so mean. <laughs> I'm not I'll read your, your emails that you send to me sometimes. You're fucking mean. Read them. I mean, I'm not going to waste time. <laughs> exactly. No, but seriously, I do, I do want to set the record straight because I did. I actually did get probably five different questions asking me why I'm so mean to Lauren. <laughs> I want to know the answer too. It's all me, like, it's alone in my that's, bedroom that's, being that's, like, why are you so mean to, why are you so mean to Lauren? And then it was announced that episode 26 was Lauren's last podcast. Basically, all that happened was that she found a new job. She had gotten married and planned on having children and just wanted something more stable. She did later end up returning to the podcast in episode 51 as a guest, but that was the last time we saw her. And then after Lauren left, a couple of potential podcast co-hosts were trialed. The first person trialed was podcaster and writer Alison Rosen. And and the next person trialed was Alexis Jezel, but she was actually underage at the time. And as we know, Shane's podcast was kind of an 18 plus podcast, or at least the stuff he talked about on the podcast was 18 plus. So she wasn't really the best fit. And then ultimately, Jesse Butterfuco was chosen as his new podcast co-host. And outside of Jesse's entertainment work, she's probably best known for being a family member connected to an attempted murder case. Essentially, her father cheated on her mom, and then the girl that he cheated on her with tried to kill the mum, but didn't succeed, and that became a big story in America. But yeah, on the podcast, Jessie was overall fairly well liked, and she was able to parlay the success of the podcast to her own YouTube channel, where she created a show titled Live Your Life Queen. In those videos, people would write in questions, and then she would give advice. So yeah, Jessie stuck around with Shane until the podcast ended. But when the podcast was created, one of the first segments that was conceived was Farrah Abraham time. Farrah Abraham time was a pretty big part of the podcast. Oh, and if you don't know who Farrah Abraham is, she is a reality TV show star who rose to fame from appearing on the TV shows 16 and Pregnant and Teen Mums. And she was always in the tabloids for doing questionable and controversial stuff. Kind of like Gabby Hanna of the reality TV show world. And before Shane incorporated her existence as a reoccurring segment in the podcast, she was in a few of his other videos as well. He did a reaction to one 
one of her music videos and he had her on as a guest on one of his skit talk shows where Shanene was the host. And Shanene is one of his offensive characters that I mentioned at the start. And since Farrah was always doing controversial stuff, she was a very easy person to bring up on their weekly podcast. Most podcasts, Shane and his co-host at the time, would talk about the events that happened in Farrah's life that week. And he even had a little jingle to accompany the segment. Like, Farrah Abraham time really was a thing. Da 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 da, Farrah Abraham time. Da 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 da, God made a mistake. Oops. And it got to the point where Shane wanted to have Farrah on the podcast as a guest. So he launched a public campaign to get her on the show. During his podcasts, Shane would encourage his fans to tweet hashtag Farrah on Shane. No. So I think she's just an idiot. But okay. I also think she's a genius and I'd love her on the show. Hashtag Farrah on Shane. Please keep tweeting her. And this hashtag was tweeted out hundreds and hundreds of times. And someone even wrote it on a sign and brought it to VidCon. But all of that campaigning went unnoticed by Farrah. It wasn't until Shane's management reached out to Farrah's management that progress was made. Despite being mocked in Shane's previous videos and being a subject of weekly humiliation, Farrah agreed to come onto the podcast for $2,000. And this podcast was one of the most anticipated podcasts that Shane had ever released. So when Farrah made it onto the podcast, one of the first things that Shane asked her was if she knew what the podcast was and what they talked about on the podcast. And the answer was pretty much no. She had no idea that she was a weekly topic of discussion. Okay, first of all, are you aware of what this show is? I'm not aware. Okay, so do you run your nice. do you run your Twitter? I, I'm on it, but I don't really, I'm not, like, effective so with it. So do you see what's going on with you and me and this show? And how much we love so you? So no, I don't. Another noteworthy moment from that podcast was when Shane was talking about Farrah's adult tape. And in the same breath, he mentions how his fans are 14. And then Farrah calls him out for that. Yours, yours look like a movie. It was like beautiful. It was and a it, fantasy within your own fantasy. It was like oh, a. Yeah? What were you wearing? Oh. What For like, wasn't she wearing? I guess the two seconds that it probably was. What wasn't on, she wearing? No, it start. Okay, here's my favorite. <laughs> I don't know why you guys really want to talk about this. I'm a little uncomfortable <laughs> if people are 14 and listening. I don't like sexual things. You know, I take my parenthood more serious these days probably because shit's gotten real with Teen it. Mom OG. Um, but I just really don't want to talk about so much sexual things. I'm 23. I definitely can, but who knows who's hearing this? Mm, the world. Well, the podcast, the, the, world. Everybody. the podcast audience is definitely, um, older. The demographic is definitely more college. So now they're not 14. Now they're older. They used I'm to hear, a little confused. Hear, I'm not persuaded. But all in all, that podcast was received fairly well by his fans and it lived up to the hype. And then Farrah launched her own podcast. Funnily enough, called Farrah and Friends. And then, of course, Shane went on as a guest to her podcast. And they were able to clarify some things around the first encounter that Farrah ever had with Shane. Like when Farrah went to Shane's house to be interviewed by Shane's character, Shanene. Because I was, like, scarred from the first time I met you. I was like, oh, my God. Wait, what scarred you? Was it I don't know a mixture like... of the drag mixed with my haunted house that we were filming Me, in? Me, the humor. <laughs> I was just like, what? And... I was like, I don't think I can ever show up ever again. Oh. And then after that, Farrah made multiple more appearances on Shane's podcast, whether it was as a full-blown guest or just to chime in on something. Basically, if you guys listen to the podcast, you know we are obsessed with Farrah Abraham. They flew her in here, laid her out on the table, and she recorded a crazy Christmas message in a Santa, slutty Santa suit for us. Here, I'm just going to show the clip. I've decided for the holidays, you bitches are getting nothing. Nothing. Not even coal. Ho, ho, ho. She became a fixture of the podcast. And then in 2016, Full Screen took over the production of Shane and Friends. And Full Screen was a streaming service of sorts. It was basically somewhat of an attempt at Netflix. So yeah, with Full Screen taking over the production of Shane and Friends, it went from being audio only and free to being also audio only and free but also having a video version of the podcast only available on the full screen app for $6. And being a video podcast with a higher budget, that opened up a lot of opportunities for them. They got a whole set and things became a lot more interactive between Shane and Jesse and Shane and Jesse and their guest. And Jesse was even able to attend events like DragCon on behalf of full screen for the podcast. So guys, I have the most beautiful picture of Shane and we're gonna go around 
and get some people to drag the shit out of them. This is Sasha Valor's little sister, Sasha Valor. <laughs> and when they had singers on as guests, they were able to do performances and they were able to bring animals in and play game show style games with their guests. Things just got a whole lot bigger. So while the podcast was still available for free as audio only, it was somewhat made pointless because of the podcasts becoming so interactive. Listening to the audio only version, it was just confusing. And in an attempt to tempt people to sign up and pay the $6 subscription fee, Shane released a episode for free on his channel where Tana Mojo was the guest. Hey, what's up you guys? Okay, first of all, yes, you're probably confused. You're like, Shane, why the f is this video an hour long? Let me explain. So as most of you guys know, I've been doing my podcast for a few years now. And a couple months ago, Full Screen came to me and said, hey, can we videotape your podcast and, you know, build you a set and make it look like a real show and put it on our app? And of course I said yes, because I've always wanted a set and I've always wanted it to be like a real show. And I have been loving it so much and it's been so much fun. And you guys have been loving it too, the ones that have seen it. But there's a lot of you guys that haven't seen the show either because you were like, I don't know if I want the app yet or, oh, I'll just listen to it on iTunes. So I asked Full Screen, hey, can I I put up an entire episode on my YouTube channel. And they said yes. Oh, and another addition to the podcast was Drew Monson. He had already been a guest on the podcast at that point, as well as a guest co-host, as well as Shane's friend. So Shane's fans, the listeners of the podcast, were already well acquainted with Drew. So he was given a more regular position on the podcast where he was usually called upon to do some kind of song on his keyboard. And things ran like this for almost two years. And then some pretty serious controversies arose from some of the things that Shane had said on the podcast. As we know, we got a pretty open and unfiltered version of Shane. He would share everything from intimate moments in his life to detailed, disturbing stories. He passed off a lot of this controversial stuff that he said as jokes, but a lot of people believed them to be confessions because sometimes he would not even say they were jokes. And one of the first things that came back to haunt him were allegations of him being a P word because of something that he said on the podcast. In January, 2018, an audio clip of Shane saying something inappropriate about a child went viral. He then made an apology and was pretty much forgiven. I'm gonna start by saying, I am not a f***ing pedophile. And then a week later, the podcast coincidentally ended. But it wasn't because of the P word allegations. Full screen pretty much just shut down without warning. And then Shane addressed the end of the podcast on his Snapchat, and he said that he would continue it again on his own, but he never did. But some of you are wondering what's going on with the podcast. And I love the podcast, um, and I do want to bring it back, obviously. And then in March 2019, another audio clip from the podcast went viral. And that, of course, is the clip where he is talking about f***ing his cat. And then he responded to those claims by tweeting out that he did not f*** his cat. And now that cat situation has taken on a whole life of its own. There are memes upon memes about the whole situation, and it's something that's still heavily associated with Shane to this day. And this situation ended up being the catalyst for why Shane deleted all of his podcasts. Because not long after, Shane had all of his podcasts wiped from the internet from where they were originally uploaded to. So they couldn't be found on iTunes or SoundCloud or anywhere where you could usually find podcasts. So all of the podcast clips you've heard in this video, just know I had to really dig for them. And yeah, now Shane has talked about how doing that podcast was one of his biggest regrets. Ask him if he has any plans of doing a podcast of his own again. No, <laughs> my nightmare. No, my God, no, I have nightmares about it just because that's where everything always ends up getting me in trouble. Never again. And Jessie also released an apology for how she acted on the podcast. In an Instagram post, she talks a bit about where her head was at at the time when she was saying and doing those things on the podcast. And in conclusion, she says, I can wholeheartedly say I am a very different person now. After my breakdown, I have had the opportunity to rebuild myself. Now, the content of my character and how I treat others is and has been the forefront of this journey. I plan on using this experience as a tool for growth, accepting responsibility for my actions and moving forward with more compassion and understanding. But yeah, now Jessie hosts her own podcast and is currently in the process of writing a memoir. Yeah, as for Shane, we know that he has also launched a new podcast and is just creating content as usual. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water. Be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens. 
and I'll see you in my next pod in my next video.